Heather of Run. We are joined by the world famous science YouTuber, Derek Muller from Veritasium. I hope you've seen his videos. There are all sorts of great ones. There's a little sampling on the screen at the moment. And when he said he was going to come to the Royal Society, I said, Derek, what are you working on at the moment? What's your next video going to be about? And he said, he's all about rainbows. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been really working on this for months. When I said to Keith, Keith, what do you know about rainbows? Look at this, look what he's dug out. Yeah, and I'm glad you've been studying rainbows because we're going to give you a test. I, I'm ready for it. Very good. This is where we'll start in that okay. case. Here we go. This is an examination paper from the University of Melbourne. Oh, wow. wow. And you can see this is 1865, October term, natural philosophy. And we have a series of questions here and they're all about colours and rainbows. So here we've got reference to Sir Isaac Newton. Describe accurately the arrangements necessary for forming a pure spectrum. What is meant by the interference of two waves? And right down in question number five here, explain the formation of the rainbow and investigate the order of the colours in the primary bow. Wow. So that's what I, I, this is what we'll be doing now, investigating those that's colours. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Derek. Hopefully everyone's already watched your video about rainbows and will know the answers to all these questions. But if you want to pause the video right now and try and answer them, you knock yourself out. What else you got, Keith? Well, it mentions Sir Isaac Newton, so I figure we've got to start there, really. And uh, his paper on light and colours, and of course, the famous prism experiments. So we have them right here. This is early letters, N. So this is Newton talking Whoa. about his prisms. This is in Newton's actual hand. That's right, yeah. So this is a printed version you can see here. Huh. Uh, and these are his experimental results as he's uh, working with colours and prisms. My understanding is that the idea was that the prism spreads white light in into its colours and that's then right. the second prism recombines it back into white. Yeah, that, that's correct, yeah. But my understanding is you might need a lens in there, but I guess he's got a few apertures. I'm just curious about yeah. whether th that's what this image is meant to be showing us. That, that's right, yeah. So here's the, the kind of the, the basic stuff. This is a prism breaking up light and the whole series of experiments is described in here. Wow. That's yeah. his handwriting, is it? That's his handwriting, yeah. It's very neat handwriting. I love that there's like little cross bits have been crossed out and fixed. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, I get so excited to think that yeah. he, his hand was here doing this. And would he have drawn the picture or would he? Yeah, he would have done. Yeah, that's it's it's amazing. And what a nice drawing too. What about just the colors? Because yeah. my understanding was that maybe before Newton, people thought of there being five colors in the rainbow. There were various theories about what white light was and what darkness was and, and the different colors involved. So yeah, it took a little while to separate out into what we recognize as a rainbow today. Okay, so we've got a, a sequence of letters here and you can see this is from Petworth. The date is 1721 and we have a sequence of letters on a variety of atmospheric phenomena here. So it's worthy sir, I find by the newspapers that the Royal Society have chosen you their secretary. This is James Durin, the new hmm. secretary of the Royal Society at this time. Upon the resignation of Dr. Halley. Edmund Halley. I heartily congratulate you upon this mark of esteem of that learned body and make no question but you will fully answer their expectations. Now that my hand is in I shall venture to send you an account of a phenomena that I lately observed with some pleasure. I think he's describing being out riding. And what does he observe a rainbow in the dew? Yeah. Whose colours uh, were very nearly as lively as those of the common iris. This is uh, a rainbow uh, and it is no more that happens in other rainbows. But he, he then describes a remarkable aspect of this here with a diagram. So you wanted a, a diagram of a bit of a rainbow. And there we go. Wow, look at that. Usefully, he that. has a key here. So uh -huh. that, that, this will tell you exactly what he's trying to show. So first, that as the LNHG angle, had, yeah, the figure will be a hyperbola parallel or ellipsis. The sun was about the 30th quarter high. When we viewed the phenomena, the iris was at a hyperbola. And thirdly, that the arches of the same iris, consisting of colours of different frangibility, may also in some cases be different sections of the cone. Mm -hmm. mm. You know something that I quite like about his diagram is it shows that the centre of the circle is essentially the shadow of the eye from the sun. So that's true of all rainbows, that the centre of that circle would be essentially a line that connects the sun through the back of your head and that goes into the centre of the circle. I think we need to look at another paper. Hang on, not before you get a picture. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you're taking pictures like live while we're doing it. This is really exciting. Well, yeah, so I mean, exciting, this, this is exciting material. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do we have here? 
This is an account of an extraordinary appearance in a mist. So January the 13th, 1768, betwixt 9 and 10 in the morning, being on an eminence that was overlooked by some low meadow ground, I observed in a direction opposite to that of the sun, which shone very bright in a miasmist, which covered the said enclosures, an unusual meteor, which, without attempting to name it, I shall describe as well as I can with the help of the following figure. So somewhere in here, I'm hoping, there's a figure of what he's describing. And here it is. So a meteor is not what I think of as a meteor. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's an a, atmospheric phenomenon. A weather phenomenon, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. It's very strange that there appear to be like at least three rainbows. <laughs> I, I, I can't make sense of it. And they're here's all little, so here's far. A little, here's a little secret, people. Before we started recording, Keith claimed to have once seen three rainbows and Derek was very, very sceptical. Yeah, that's what but I was saying. There's, there's no collective. There is no collective now. But there should be, because you see loads of rainbows at a time, usually. You can see two or three well, at a time. My, what will you can see two. Yeah, I've seen three before. Yeah. How could you see three? Yeah. I, I need not to see... Whole, not whole ones, but... Well, I still, I, I need to see photographic evidence of yeah. that. Yeah, you, Derek, because Derek accepts nothing. I don't, and think, look it's, at I don't this. think it's possible. Well, oh, no. okay. It, it, look it, at this. A drawing from the olden days. No. You can't argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Isn't it exciting though? What must it have been like at this time when all of this stuff was on the table and interesting and like, you know. Yeah, and every, everything was new and not known. Uh, so this one is an observation of three mock suns seen in London, Friday, September the 17th, 1736, by Martin Folks. Martin Folks became president of the Royal Society. Three mock suns? Mock suns, yeah. So sun dogs, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that is a great picture. Nice. I mean, you look at that and you think, oh yeah, I, I know exactly what he's drawing there. The best thing about this illustration, I found, uh, I wasn't expecting it, but uh, on the other page, he's doodled a little lady. Isn't that nice? Oh, wow. <laughs> huh. Perhaps Iris, the goddess of the rainbow, who knows? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here's another one. So this is a demonstration of a strange appearance in the air over Coleraine on Whit Monday betwixt 1 and 2 in the afternoon, 1690. And we've got an explanation here. And you can see it involves a large rainbow and three small rainbows. Whoa. Three? Yeah. Well, look, hang on. Keith, you really think you've seen multiple rainbows? Yeah. Like more than two? Yeah. I wish you had your phone the on you. E the there. evidence is before us, Brady. Well, but look, th these are not ordinary rainbows. Can Keith didn't say he saw ordinary rainbows. Yeah. He just said he saw three rainbows. Were some of them on his TV? Like, you know, <laughs> were they were they full circles or were they just arches? Partials. They were yeah. arches. Yeah, yeah. Did they intersect the ground or no? Uh, the the big ones did. The small ones didn't. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I, I I trust Keith a lot. And you don't trust me? Well, <laughs> yeah, I trust you too. <laughs> I love, look at the 1690. We're seeing what someone's looking at in 1690 and they're like. Yeah, that's amazing. They're getting it down. I don't know what they've done this with. Is that ink or? Ink, yeah, it's an ink wash, yeah. So Rainbow. what are we looking at here? Do you actually, can you figure that out, Derek? No, I, I can't make sense of that. All right, let's move on. Ah, uh, this is a good one. So this is by Scheutzer, who, who we know very well as a, as a Swiss scientist, an account of a white iris. So this is a white rainbow uh -huh. that he's seen, and he uh, reports it to the president of the Royal Society. It happened to me on the 12th of September, 1728, when I was traveling from Zurich to Baden, surrounded all the way with a thick fog, which lasted from five in the morning till nine. That I observed for the last two hours in the fog, an iris of a broad band and of a white color. This phenomenon, which I never saw before, has been also observed not far away from Olau in Silesia by a clergyman on the 9th of September, 1717, at seven in the morning. Yeah. It's often like mists and fogs and yeah. things seem to be involved with these things. Totally. And you know why? Because if you want to get a white rainbow, what you need is very small droplets. Yeah. These tiny little droplets don't give you quite the uh, reflections, normal reflections. So instead you get more of an interference phenomenon, as right. far as I understand. Okay. Yeah. So white rainbows are like a thing. They are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you want to hear a theory that my wife and I have that you're going to absolutely despise? Okay. We've got a little boy now, so we want to show him rainbows. But I feel like we never see rainbows. Like I'm always like, oh, I can't wait to show him a rainbow. Oh, there's no rainbow today. Oh, this is good rainbow weather. Oh, no rainbow. When I was a kid, there were rainbows all the time. We've got a theory that there are less rainbows now than mm -hmm. there were when we were kids. Wow. Well, that is, uh, <laughs> maybe it's true. 
<laughs> maybe, <laughs> like, because you lived in Adelaide, right? Yeah. And so maybe there's just more rainbows in Adelaide. There, there are parts of the world where you're going to see more rainbows, where you've got both rain and sun at the same time. You also need the sun to be underneath a 42 degree angle to be able to see one. So, yeah, depending on the time of day and, yeah. Okay. Keith, is that another book for us? That is another book for you. I'm, I'm sure we've, we've uh, saturated you with colour from the, the images we've seen so far. Yes. So I'd, I'd, I'd take pity on you and get just one, just it, one more. It just has more. been disappointing, just the, the black and white. <laughs> there has been a lack of colour. We've seen this on Objectivity before, I think, Brady, haven't we? Ah, oh, right, yes. Here are two 18th century gentlemen in Switzerland at the foot of a waterfall. And finally, we get a bit of colour. Hmm. So this is the, the spray, presumably, from the waterfall, yeah. just creating the rainbow effect. What's funny, though, is that the person who's drawing this, they couldn't have seen that, right? They're trying to pretend that this is what this, this guy This is gentleman seeing. is showing yeah. the, his friend. But from the perspective of drawing it, you yeah. wouldn't see that. It wouldn't be like that, I would suspect. Oh, scientists, they spoil everything, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Next you're going to be telling me there's no pot of gold. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a very complete rainbow. Must have been lots of mist. Well, there we go. Surely this is the least colourful rainbow video ever made. So far. So I, far. I think we can be proud of that, Brady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for showing me all of this. This is phenomenal. A really big thanks to Derek for joining us at the Royal Society. If you'd like to see more of his work, go over to Veritasium. I'm sure you probably already watch his videos. Make sure you check out his Rainbow One that was uploaded quite recently. And if you'd like to see more special guests here on Objectivity, well, there have been plenty of them, as you can see on the screen there. This is a bit of gossip, then. This yeah. is a little bit of gossip. There'll be a link to a playlist down in the description so you can see loads more of these videos. So, 10 Downing Street, not yet the Prime Minister's residence. It's still a private house at this point. Oh, really? Point. How did you know that, Keith? Yeah, I, it's just talent. And speaking of lists of people who are very important, you can also see on the screen at the moment our Patreon supporters. People who give that little bit extra to make this channel possible. If you'd like to join them, also there's a link down in the video description. October the 4th, 1957. There you go. This man knows. What's the next big moment in the race for space? It's got to be Yuri. We've got you covered. Really? You ready for some um, Yuri Gagarin action? Yuri. He's a good looking dude. Yeah.